Charles Scrope believes his troubles will soon be over. But even as he deals with one problem, another one appears. This takes the shape of a visit from his former wife, Mrs. Felicity Scrope. She's out the fridge away. Oh, she's taking the microwave as well. Cow. Yeah? Uh, she's taking the amp, right? Look, she's taking the amp. She's left everything else. Cheers. Why didn't you bloody tell me? You saw the van. Now stop. Can we st st stop this now? But what of Giles' own family? Why no word from his five identical brothers? We know already that on their 18th birthday, there was something of a falling out. The thing is that I was responsible for booking the hall and making sure there was enough glasses. Nothing else. Don't know why they blame me. So, the reason six identical children grew up, then grew apart, remains a mystery. State of the art, this one. See, from here, you get an idea of... Look, right, up there, you see, that, that's, uh, that's Arthur's seat, right? Over there. Um, over there... No, it's all right. Over there is... Uh, you can't see it, it's over the back. Is where the Thames starts. OK, you know, that's not bad. And, um... Oh, the cows have finished. That's good. See that cow hanging back there at the end there? I clipped that one the other day. I think it'll be all right, though. Uh, big old bugger, that one. What I'm doing here is, because uh, of, of the potatoes and the crows and all that, I, uh, I bought this state-of-the-art um, scarecrow. I'm not quite sure how it works. I tell you, it's brand new. Not many crows, you see, it's working on... Oh, no, look, look. Here we go. We need to put a... That's what, that's what you do. You've you got to put a stick in the back. It'll be fine when I get a stick, I'm sure. Lock that side. It's Thursday, and Giles has decided to put his immediate problems to one side and spend a day of rest and recuperation at the Bath and West show. But unbeknownst to Giles, his ex-wife has decided to take advantage of his absence and pay a second unannounced visit to 300 Acre Farm. <laughs> This is, uh, this is my, my, this is my patch, really. This is my territory, my ground. All the farmers, we all get together, you know. All right? Yeah. I know a lot of people here. All right, here you go. Oh, no, I don't know him, now. Culture. I know Paul very well, funnily enough. You'd, I tell you, you'd, you'd like him. If we could, uh... Hello there. It's, uh... It's, um... It's Paul there. Paul, Uh... Paul, is he there? Mr. Paul? Yeah. No. No. OK. No. Maybe later. And what sort of a pig's this? It's a boar, this one. How old? Um, born in January. Yeah, it's about January this one was born. Uh, and how much, what, how much did it cost? Um, 150, Yeah, it's about 150, 200 pounds, this one. Uh, born in January, as I say. It's a, uh, what sort of a pig is it? British lock. A British? Lock. It's a British, a British lock pig. <laughs> hey, hey, hey! Be careful with that. 
farm machinery. Just be careful, all right? You come unstuck. You don't know what you're dealing with. That's good to me. That sounds good to me. Great. I love the last issue. <laughs> this is... I reckon this... It's like a, this is like a sort of, a weekend combine harvester. No, look, what's this picture here? There's a man getting in it. So, uh, that would be for, um, you know, sandwiches or something. Ow. This is actually what I'm after. One of these things that collects the grass and then spits it all out. This is for collecting grass, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. How much, how much is that? Um, working out my colleague. Five, five. Seven and a half, I think. About seven and a half thousand. Thousand? Seven and a half thousand, yeah. Is that, is that sort of wood tax or...? Uh, yeah, we could throw in the road tax. Full tank, all that? Uh, well, I suppose we can arrange that, yeah. yes. Yeah, I'm going to try to borrow, OK? Yeah. Yeah, track track borrow, okay? Even on Giles' day off, the bad luck that has dogged his farming career finally catches up with him. No, he's not here. No. The tow truck, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I know, yeah. He's, yeah, he's not, no, he's about two weeks, I think, he's all right for. Yeah. Yeah, all right, I'll tell, yeah, I'll tell him, yeah. Yeah, and if he doesn't, then, yeah, all right. No, I, I'm only looking after the place for him, pal. OK, yeah. I'll tell him. Cheers. Despite his many worries, including the neighbour now suing Butterfly Valley for the loss of his cabbage crop, Giles Scroat still looks to the future. Uh, what I thought I'd do is I'd pare, pare it all down, get it, you know, get it more streamlined, you know. So uh, I've laid the farm hands off, and uh, in the light of what's been happening and all that, I thought it's probably best. Uh, a lot of the buildings, what I've done with these buildings out here is. Uh, Oh, she's only had the bloody goldfish as well. Today's economic climate is harsh. Doubly so for the farming community, in which Giles Scrote believes each of us must find his natural level. With the sale of his livestock and most of his land, Giles hopes to escape that which has plagued farmers all down the centuries. Uncertainty. And whatever tribulations the future may hold for Giles Scrote, uncertainty is not among them. Next Thursday, it's the turn of the last and most promising of the Scrote sextuplets, Tarquin Scrote, at 11.45.